Hey, what's up, party people? Bro Trio here to bring you our top 10 games of 2019. Now, a little backstory on the Bro Trio and where we have been. Uh, holidays are pretty busy, and we all traded being sick, so that explains that. Uh, <laughs> yeah. That being said, 2018 was a hell of a year. One of the best years in gaming. Oh, it's fantastic. And, mm -hmm. I mean, it was really hard to pick. 10 games alone, and it was one of the, our most heated debates we've had here. Oh, gosh. Ranking this list. <laughs> we left out some good ones, too. Yeah. But here it is the best of the best, the top 10 Bro Trio games of 2018. One of the best fighting games I have ever played was Dragon Ball Fighters. Like, it just, it was so fluid, so fast, and so fun. And, it, I mean, it just looked like you were playing the anime. Yeah, it straight it up really just did. looked amazing. And oh it was... Oh my god. It was so good. Yeah. Oddly enough, it came out against Marvel vs. Capcom, the new one, and it was the yeah. best Marvel vs. Capcom game that came out that year because it used the classic 3 versus 3 formula to like great success. It was amazing picking your own teams, varying from Goku to Kid Buu to Beerus the Destroyer. It was just yeah. an amazing, amazing experience. One of the best fighting games and a decent story mode. I mean, it wasn't oh, yeah. like, you know, changing the gaming landscape or anything, but it was pretty good. Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Pokemon Let's Go Eevee are definitely the best remakes of the year in our opinion. They took Kanto and shed a whole new light on it, upgraded everything, it's not all Game Boy graphics anymore, no. Yeah. It's... Full 3D movement, 3D Pokemon game. I mean, the, the art design was a little simplistic, but I think it works for Pokemon. It definitely yeah, works. It worked. Yeah, like... Pokemon aren't super detailed, so it worked. Everything worked. Having any... Pokemon that you want following you oh, yeah. was fantastic. Every that was game, big, in, like every game in the future, needs to have that as a feature. Yeah, that was all the biggest the, selling point. All nine hundred, whatever of them. Oh god. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can have Love Disc and Psyduck, whatever, following you. And seeing the Pokemon in the overworld made the Pokemon world feel a lot more like an actual world than it ever yeah, has. Yeah, well, lived in. It was, a, it was alive outside. Yeah, you don't get in a fight with a gigantic <laughs> snake made of rocks that's 11 feet tall out of nowhere anymore. You see that tall bastard, and once you catch him, you can ride him off into the horizon. The best indie game and the only one on this list this year in my opinion was easily the messenger this game took everything you loved about classic platforming and just ramped it up to the next level and beyond i mean it looks like a basic pixel art you know 8-bit ninja game and you get further into it and it is so much more than that there's time travel there's ad some of the best music that I've ever heard oh, the, in a game. The you music can hop, is fantastic. You can hop between 8-bit and 16-bit. Yeah, the future is 16-bit, the yeah. past is 8-bit. It's very clever, very awesome, and the art direction is just, like, so amazing. Like, dealing with jumping to 8-bit, you see everything get, like, three other colors in 16-bit. You get a hat, you get, <laughs> not to mention the gameplay, like, you get so many weapons with, like, your grappling hook and your shurikens and your water runny shoes, whatever they're called. The Messenger is one of those games that, right from the get-go, during the tutorial, you fall in love with it and you know, I'm gonna f***ing love this game. A game series that I have always admired from afar is definitely Monster Hunter. I tried multiple times to get into this series, never could. Just wasn't my type of game. But Monster Hunter World changed that. It took okay. out all the crap I didn't like about the other ones, and no offense to Monster Hunter fans, I know they're well-made games, there were just certain things that I could not do. But damn, Monster Hunter World just brought the A game. Yeah, they made it oh, easily yeah. accessible to newcomers, like... As the like Scotty said, it was one of the main things was it was daunting to jump into a game that like 
you know, you go online and find a 16-page tutorial on how to use yeah. a sword. And it's still <laughs> tough as nails. I mean, maybe yeah. not as hard as the older Monster Hunters, but it's still tougher than most games out there. And, like, it's just the best co-op of 2018. Oh, yeah. And Hands down. It was so much variety, too. It's so yeah. much fun, and I, I'm... I'm waiting for the expansion, and maybe we'll get back into it. The the ice expansion, I forget what it's called. Yeah. I want to get back into it. I really do, but there's just been no time, and that... Oh, God, that game is such a time commitment. But it has yeah. some of the best monster designs in any game. And it better, because right. it's called Monster Hunter. Yeah. But, you, I mean, the Anjanath just looks like an awesome T-Rex, and he surprised me with his wings and his nose. <laughs> Didn't see that coming. The Rathalos is... Just a fucking cool looking dragon that has poison claws and fire breath. Uh, Puke Puke is hilarious. I just, it just uh, throws up on everything. I just like that, that was probably my favorite monster in there because I didn't expect it. Yeah. And then Kukulaku. Don't know how to say that, but that's what I'm saying. And <laughs> yeah, that chicken I, with the rock. Yeah. This is, oh my god. Like it's so good, and I really do want to get back into it one day. But I am definitely a Monster Hunter fan. For the rest of my life, if they keep up this momentum. Dual Blades for life. Octopath Traveler is one of the best, if not the best, turn based RPG in several years. And it was just, it's so charming. Like, the characters are well written, and the world just feels like inviting, but also kind of scary at times. Yeah. I agree. And, like, everything is kind of independent but also interlocking and it, everything is just crafted so well and the the HD yeah the art like style. pixel yeah. art whatever the you, art I forget what they call it yeah, HD 2D I think. yeah HD 2D oh, you God. have to you have to see that to understand what it is it looks so good and it, you know you like, see people on the internet or whatever oh this could have been done on PS1 and yeah maybe technically but Good God, it looks so yeah. much better than, like, a yeah. Super Nintendo game. Like it, it doesn't look like... It just looks like a straight-up pop-up book. It's amazing. Yeah, the whole <laughs> pixel art with high-quality lighting effects, it just worked so well and made me instantly fall in love with this game. The minute I saw it, and then I got to play it, and I fell in love all over again. If there's something every gamer ever can unanimously agree on it's that everybody loves a comeback for a gaming icon if there's another thing it's that Mega Man's f***ing badass yes <laughs> yeah. and Mega Man 11 came out and it brought it and it brought Mega Man back to form in a way that was different yet the same Hell it mixed yeah. it up with the double gear system which was a really cool mechanic for this game I don't know if they're going to continue with it for other games but for this one it definitely worked to great yeah. effect. And his helmet changed when he changed power. Yeah, that yeah, was one that of was, the best that parts. That was super cool. Is, uh, they apparently had always meant to do cosmetic changes for Mega Man, but were limited due to the, the hardware at the time. Mm -hmm. And now they can do it. And it, they have the hand-drawn sprites, so you can fully see, like, you know, he gets Fuse Man's helmet when he uses Fuse Man's power. It's absolutely amazing. The powers were some of the best in years. Acid Man, I will go right. on record saying that is the best shield ability Mega Man has ever had. Definitely. Some of the best Robot Master designs. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. Some, some of them are not great. But like, I thought Blast Man was a really cool design. Yeah. Blast Man, I like uh, Glacier Man, whatever his name Tundra is. Man. Tundra, Tundra Man. Tundra Man. Yeah. And I mean, Block Man looks dumb, but I mean, he's still pretty cool. He's made out of blocks. Going into it, I always had the thought that this new Spider-Man game, if done right, could contend with the Batman Arkham series. But, having played it, I think it blew those games out of the water. Now, I'm not trashing the Arkham series. Those games are amazing. Yeah. And it really showed you what it would be like to be Batman. This game did that, but for Spider-Man. This game wouldn't be possible without the Arkham series, but good God is it amazing. Spider-Man is one of those superheroes that seems like it would be hella easy to just adapt into a video game because his powers are so unique and interesting. But few have succeeded. But <laughs> this PS4 <laughs> Spider-Man game really, really succeeded. It has some of the best writing in any Spider-Man uh, story that I've ever yeah, seen. Yeah, it really was yeah. amazing writing. 
the voice acting and motion capture was also oh, yeah. just freaking incredible. Yuri Lowenthal is my favorite Spider-Man. Like, I know he's like 40 years old and he's a voice actor, whatever, <laughs> who cares? I don't care. He is my favorite Spider-Man. They had one of my favorite Doc Ocks, and every villain was superbly done. That, I mean, it got Horizon Zero Dawn. It would have been higher on this list were it not for these next two games that just were once notch above it. But good God, I can't wait to see what Insomniac has up their sleeve for the well crawler next. I want to see more Spider Cop. God damn it, Aaron. Super Smash Brothers is one of those games, it's just in a league of its own. There is, there's nothing to compare it to, really. It's, it's, the only competition is the previous Smash Brothers games. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, like, this one, it's called Ultimate for a reason. Everything's there. There's all the characters you could ever want, plus more. Oh, yeah. There's so many stages. There's an, like, infinite array of music, basically. And it's just all around fun. Like, everything's fun. Every newcomer is awesome. Yeah, yeah the, they really uh, are. And not to mention, the different modes that are new that they added are pretty great. Like, yeah, Squad like, Strike is a fun, like, Smash, like, Marvel vs. Capcom kind of take on it. And Smash Down Smash is Down. just awesome. <laughs> that it's, it's mode, the best. oh That's man. so fun. And then, like, World of Light was pretty good. It wasn't the best ever. Uh, I mean, we thought it was a little lacking because we wanted... You know, subspace emissary style cutscenes, and we didn't really get them. Yeah. But I mean, it still had cool, unique spirit fights. Like you know, Bowser is like you're fighting a Lakitu spirit, and Bowser is a bunch of the spinies, and Iggy is the Lakitu, and it's just a bunch of unique yeah. fights like, like that. Where and it I mean, makes like it, it worked. Spoilers, go away if you don't want to hear it. You get to play as motherfucking Master Hand. Very true. What? the hell oh it was so awesome but the best part about smash is the verses and that is where it shines it does everything smash for wii u did but better it does it goes back to like the hefty speed and we keep saying it every time we play we're just like man this character got that much better but Pichu is, is good now it's everybody's much, good now. i think it's really just the game is <laughs> yeah, that much yeah. better because like Aaron said, this is the Ultimate Smash game. One of the most heated debates in Bro Trio history that almost broke us up was <laughs> what game is the best of 2018? You have God of War and Red Dead Redemption 2. We did a lot of heated debates, a lot of trying to convince each other that the other game was better, and then it ultimately came down to a coin flip, which is better. God of War, Red Dead Redemption 2, flip it, comes up, Tails. So God of War is in second place. And it is my first game of the year because this game took everything, like, everything I knew about God of War and, like, threw it away but kept it and got it, like, just refreshed it. It turned this one note character into a symphony basically oh, because man, Kratos added so much to his character he used to just be this yelly yelly stab stab man Very and angry. now he's he still yells but he's more just like a begrudging like grumpy man and he you know what I mean <laughs> I can talk about Kratos all day but let's move on to the combat because the combat is where this game truly shines because it is so fluid and amazing you do everything you have a sun button where you can make him shoot and you can even <laughs> upgrade him so much that like he can juggle people in the air with his arrows while you're chopping away at him with your leviathan axe oh speaking of that yeah. axe when you call that bastard back to you and you feel the vibration of the controller when it hits kratos's hand oh my god yeah it's it's, it's I amazing you know, i don't know how they did this on the playstation but they made it feel as if it has the switch's hd rumble when you call that axe back when it hits kratos's it's hand it's so satisfying I am, yeah i i get close to climax every time it hits kratos's hand <laughs> it's amazing plus spoilers if you haven't played god of war but with that scene whenever kratos goes back to his house and gets the blades of chaos. The f***ing blades. That 
added so much to the game I thought I was almost at the end of and then they were just like <laughs> ah, hell no there's still like 20 hours left to buckle in God of War was just one of the most cinematic games you could ask for telling a story of a father and his son on a journey that just keeps getting pushed back and pushed back and keeps getting crazier and crazier every step of the way and it really made you care for Kratos and Atreus both equally and left you wanting more but also extremely satisfied with what you got. Alright, we're at the tip top of the list now. Like he said, it was a heavy debate. I was even heavily debating with myself which one of these was better. I was arguing for Red Dead. He was arguing for God of War. Aaron was the mediator. My God. That was it, a hard job. Was, yeah. <laughs> Coin flip, because we both made ex... ex I, I even tried to pick random topics, and they still came out of yeah. a tie. We... Yeah, <laughs> it came down to a coin flip because we both made excellent arguments for these excellent games. But, like, the coin flip decided it. Brochero's official game of the year is Red Dead Redemption 2. And holy shit, did it deserve it. God of War deserved it too. But damn, Red Dead is probably the most detailed open world I have ever seen. Yeah, Red Dead was yeah, freaking amazing. Like There was so much we could do in that game. and uh, it's, it's just massive. We, like, the game. I would be talking to Aaron, telling him I did stuff, and he would just be baffled that you could do that. Yeah, just, like, <laughs> yeah, I ate a can of beans, and I threw a tomahawk at a lady, and... You know, I kidnapped a horse. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it was, and there's just so much stuff that a lot of people would have never seen that has its own story and cutscenes and like, like, and I know a lot of people have seen this one bad example, but I had no clue about it. I just ran across this random couple in a swamp or whatever, and they were like brother and sister, and they were banging, and it was gross, and then they tried to kill Arthur and blah blah blah. So I went and burned their house down. Oh my god! <laughs> and don't even get me started on the story oh the story oh, was just incredible holy hell that story was it went just the way you'd expect but you still love it like you knew all these characters fates essentially but you still grew to care a lot about them and arthur morgan he is probably my favorite video game protagonist with his development and just the way he is by the end of it is so Darkly different from how you started the game. Oh my god. Red Dead is more than a game, it's an experience. Red uh Red That's Dead a good Redemption way to put 2. It. Yeah, Red Dead Redemption 2 has so much going for it and so little going against it. And those are just some of the reasons why it's our game of the year. I mean I've had games make me tear up before, but I didn't have I've never had a game make me openly weep three times in the last act oh my god they rockstar pulled out all the stops to make red dead redemption 2 and good god it really shows well maybe when your mother's finished mourning your father i'll keep her in black on your behalf you think on that boy well there you have it that's bro trio's top 10 games of 2018 now, please let us know what games you think won 2018, but really, the true winners were us, the gamers, because 2018 had so many great games, it's hard to pick just 10. So let us know what you like, give this video a like, don't forget to subscribe, and keep tuned to Bro Trio for more content later date.